Hello and welcome to She TV. Today I'm talking to you about why courage and vulnerability are so important on your path to feminine power. All right, so we have an important topic to discuss today, courage and vulnerability. And you might be thinking, aren't they two ends of an opposite spectrum? C c you know, courage over here and vulnerability over here. And why are you having a conversation about those two seemingly oxymoronic concepts in the same discussion? Good question, <laughs> because I'm basically passing that that's probably what people think, that courage is something that we do without fear. Courage is what we do when we just pull all our shackles together and we just bolster up and then we make something happen. <laughs> and vulnerability, and the worst thing, by the way, as an aside, is that the belief that vulnerability is a weakness, that it's something that we don't talk about, that it's a dirty word, and that God forbid you be vulnerable in front of any other human being or in any situation. Now, Brene Brown, who's a shame and vulnerability researcher, <laughs> um, was about to do a TED talk a number of years ago, and she usually turns up to her TED talks um, bolstered by her statistics, barriered by her statistics. And she said to her husband the night before, I am going to talk about shame and vulnerability and I am not going to talk about the statistics in this talk tomorrow. And her husband said, why? You're crazy. And that TED talk went to 10, 20, 100, 1,000, a million, 5 million views almost overnight. It went viral. It seemed that she was talking to the heart of the human soul. She was talking to the heart of something that is poorly represented and highly misrepresented in our world. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is how fundamental vulnerability is to the feminine emergence piece. And without it, we are having potentially a misleading or in fact empty conversation around feminine power and energy. And I'm going to cop to something here. When I first created the Powerfully Feminine Intensive program, I had one of the modules and it was called uh, Vulnerability and Receptivity. And in my own cowardice and in my own watching people don't want to talk about vulnerability, Candice, I changed it to the art of receptivity. And then I Trojan horse the discussions around vulnerability in conversations like this. It seems that we don't want to talk about it. It seems that we want to pretend it's not happening. It seems that the perception of vulnerability is that it is weak, powerless, and anything but what we want to embrace and to own and to understand better. And I've put it in a discussion around courage. <laughs> so if we look at Brene Brown's decision that evening, she went into a TED talk, a 17 minute TED talk, barely prepared. And she said, I'm not going to put my statistics between me and the audience. She wasn't even thinking that it was being videoed on YouTube. She just went, I'm going to turn up vulnerable and speak about my experience <laughs> and the mistakes I've made and the way I've stood up again and the things I've faced as a speaker, as a researcher, as a mother. So she decided to get in the arena on a TED talk, an opening of a TED talk in Houston and put her heart on her sleeve. Now, the thing that I really want to pass today is you cannot have courage without the willingness to be vulnerable. You cannot put yourself on the court, in the arena, put your passions forward, have the courage to move toward what matters to you, what potentially is your purpose, bringing yourself out of hiding, being real, being honest, 
learning from your mistakes, falling down without the willingness to be vulnerable. There is not one person on the planet who you see who is a visible person in the public, whether they're um, an actor, an actress, a, a sports person, uh, a spokesperson, somebody who gets in front of the public without them having to face this vulnerability inside themselves, feel it every time they go in front of the camera. And then what we do when we turn up on the court or in the arena and we make ourselves public is we face potentially all sorts of criticism. We face the very gremlins that we fear, which is why people don't get on the court and in the arena. This is why courage and vulnerability go together, because when you do stand up, put yourself forward. I'm standing for something that is literally like a salmon swimming up against a very strong current. Like we're jumping up those, those little waterfalls, like the salmon trying to swim toward its spawning grounds. When I talk about feminine power, the stream that we're pushing up against is an entire consciousness of our modern world that is dominant toward masculine consciousness, masculine paradigms, masculine ways of thinking. And I am saying, this is not the only way. What happened to the feminine? Where did it go? Why is this not seen as, impo as important, as powerful as this masculine thing? So I spend a lot of time with you pulling elephants out of the space as to assumptions we make that this way of thinking, acting, doing that we have taken on and assumed within ourself, our consciousness, our ways of being, thinking and acting that are in fact potentially not ours at all, that we've just adopted them from society because society has told us that that's the way to think, do and act. And then I've gone, well, really, is that really how you think, do and act? Is that really how you want to be in your life and to operate in your life? Is this really how you want to move forward? And is this the way in which you're going to be able to actually tap into your wildest dreams, desires, and wants for yourself and potentially the world around you? So when we have the courage to dive into desire, for example, we have the courage to uncover things that we perhaps haven't even admitted to ourselves, let alone getting to the point where we request it of another person. I am asking for this thing from you because it matters to me. And learning to deep dive into desire, make a request as a, an offering out there into the world to the divine or to a man without expectation. Ah, oh, what if he doesn't do it? What if he doesn't respond? What if he can't? Oh, that's incredibly vulnerable to do that. That is you putting your heart out there. That is your heart on the court, in the arena, saying this is important to me and I don't know how it's going to be responded to. Despite the stories playing in my head saying, I will be rejected, this will be pushed away, I will be presumed to be demanding, I will be seen as crazy, I will be seen as impossible, I'll be seen as too much. And yet deciding to do it anyway, because without it, without this courage, and this vulnerability to put yourself in the arena and on the court, life is rendered banal, mute, and potentially meaningless to you. Now in the work on feminine power and energy, this recalibrating of ourselves toward the essence of vulnerability that is already inscribed in our bodies as women, if only by virtue of the fact that we have smaller and weaker physical bodies than men. We walk around knowing that we are weaker than men physically. I remember a story. I was uh, doing a med medical student review 
which is a show that we put on with the, 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 the med students in uh, college. And he was this smaller than me, Mexican guy, super smart, brilliant, loved him. I worked out at the gym two hours a day then. I was relatively strong. I was very strong. <laughs> I was very fine. I was also very masculine. <laughs> And I really thought that I could take him down. And we had a conversation over a party one day. It's like, no way. You know, I could take a man down. I'm strong. And he just, and he said, okay, take me on. So he didn't leap on me or anything. He said, come at me. And I went at him and he just turned me over and pinned me down within about three seconds. And in that moment, I realized this core essential physical vulnerability that we all have inside of us. So my confidence was more mental until I was shown, whoa, even this small man, he wasn't particularly, you know, enormous or anything, took me down. So if you pretend that you're not vulnerable, you're already lying to yourself. If we pretend that we're not vulnerable and terrified when we put ourselves out there, if we're looking for a partner or we're dating, or if we pretend we're not vulnerable when we're trying to write our first book, or we're gonna make our first video, or gosh, I wanna move out of my job and I wanna do something else. You are lying to yourself. It is there, it is inside you, and it is something to be embraced. We don't have courage despite our fear and vulnerability. We have courage because of it. And we want to surround ourselves with people that love us for that too, that we put ourselves out there, that we stand up, that we fall down, that we get up again. And let's be super clear, this pathway of vulnerability and courage and you standing up in the arena whatever that arena is for you in this moment or in this time of your life you are guaranteed to fall at times you are going to fall on your face you're going to have people judge what you do it's going to feel bad you're going to make mistakes that is actually a guarantee of the people that are courageous enough to stand in the arena to get on the court and we need courage also to learn something new, such as feminine power. To admit that I really don't know how to be feminine, I really don't know what feminine power and energy is, is courageous. That is a courageous first step. That I don't have role models on this. That I don't even know if I'm terrified of it. <laughs> I don't even know if this is what I really want because my perception of it is X, Y, Z that it's weak, that it's lesser than, that I'm going to lose my power, that I'm going to be seen as um, a lesser person, I'll be less successful. That you don't want to admit these things that are going in your head, but that you tread a path where you have enough courage to go, okay, well, I'm willing to put myself out there. I'm willing to try this on. I'm willing to, in order that I can try it, like really try it personally, not just gain more intellectual knowledge, but actually step on the court. Wow, I'm gonna try this feminine art today. I'm gonna put myself out there and I'm gonna put myself into my feminine polarity and see how the world responds. That is you putting yourself on the court and you're gonna get feedback. You'll even get feedback that will justify why you shouldn't do that. <laughs> because when you're learning something new, like if we were going to get on the court and pick up a tennis racket for the first time, you're going to whack the ball all sorts of directions and it's not actually going to, you're not going to be really in the game yet, right? <laughs> and we know that when we play tennis and we know that we need a coach and that we know that we need some training to get the ball in the court and start to be able to angle it. And, we, and then occasionally we're going to go, I'm going to really give this a go and then we whack the ball over the fence. <laughs> it's like, okay, <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw that one because it went way out of bounds. But you're willing, <laughs> you're willing to pick up the racket and start hitting the ball, knowing that you don't know how to play tennis. <laughs> right? I'm encouraging you to consider this relationship between courage and vulnerability. I'm encouraging you 
to be courageous. I'm encouraging you to step on the court, to be willing to fall on your face, to be willing to make mistakes, to be willing to not know something in order that you can reach out to somebody that does, a coach, a mentor, somebody or a community for that matter, who can lead you toward the very thing that you know, know, know deep inside you that you actually really want. I know this is a vulnerable topic. This is a, whoa, why did you have to bring up this one? <laughs> this is like the big elephant that we don't want to talk about as women. And yet you need to, in this very first instant, get that you are physically vulnerable in this world. But you cannot make that a reason to not step out there. You cannot make that a reason to not get on the court. You can't make that a reason to hide anymore, to not become your queen, your priestess, to stand in yourself and to know that you're not meant to do it on your own. This is designed. This is why I have communities. Okay. My programs have communities where I support you. International community of women support you. That's how I've got it set up so that you are not floating out there on your own, like a lone wolf flying solo, thinking you have to work it out on your own. This is why I create sisterhood community. This is why we are here together. What struck me as I put this topic out there and few people wanted to listen. So those that are here are listening and are responding and are willing to digest this concept. You're already courageous. <laughs> you're already moving in a direction, as they say, a path less traveled that is actually the pathway toward your true, deep, real inner freedom. So I do invite you to really ponder on, digest this information and feel where you're at with it. Feel, okay, well, I'm not quite ready to get on the court yet, but that's also honest. That's more honest than believing you are, but you're not. But that's also a motion toward the path, right? And to recognize this essence of vulnerability that's inside of us, that's important for us to be in conversation about and to be willing to be in. <laughs> it's already there. So I'm not really telling you to do anything that's not already there in the background. And we have so many reasons and stories and justifications for why to not be vulnerable. And yet, unless we want to close down and shut down our life and our desires and our wantings and who we really are, then we're going to have to keep being prepared to bring it forward. I'm going to encourage you to share below your comments and your experiences around this topic of courage and vulnerability. Okay. I want you to comment on courage and vulnerability in your life. And especially if you've been willing to get on the court and what experiences you bring to share about them. And remember when you have the courage to go out there and shine, which means vulnerable and courageous, <laughs> you give others permission to do the same. So let's all go out there and shine this week. Sending much, much love from me to you. And I'll see you back here soon. Bye bye for now.